I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on the Spotlight Network, we're confronting one of the world's most urgent challenges, clean, sustainable water. We're talking about a powerful new book. It is called A New Water Future. It's written by a terrific author. His name is Rick Davidge. This groundbreaking book delivers three decades of research and innovation, offering real-world solutions for California, Mexico, South America, and China using pristine glacial sources and advanced market-based systems. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. And be sure to download the Spotlight Network TV app streaming on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. Rick, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Oh, I'm delighted. Delighted to have you on the show. You've been called the water czar. Explain to <laughs> us about how that title came to be. Well, I became the first director of water for the state of Alaska. And uh, in that posi position, uh, Governor uh, wanted to do something about water. And uh, he, he started off with a pipe going from Alaska to California. And uh, so I got a team of engineers and we worked through that and re realized that wasn't going to work, mainly mm -hmm. because Canada wouldn't allow us to run any close to uh, their uh, border. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so then I began to look at uh, ships, and uh, I, I couldn't find a ship that was big enough, and uh, the, the cost of the ship, where you could get it made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all in the book. Yeah. But um, uh, finally, uh, I found a, a company making uh, large. Uh, ships for ta taking things like water or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I began to really focus on cost mm -hmm. um, and uh, the cost of ships from Alaska to California uh, and other parts of the world uh, began to pay. Mm -hmm. And that's when I sat down and got serious about the book. Yeah. So what's your theory that we could import large quantities of water from glacial areas up north to areas down south and on the west coast where it's needed? Well, the sources that I'm talking about are, are in south Alaska, uh, which is close to Se Seattle, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, those, those are um, long sections of glaciers um they're they're running uh all all year all, all season so you don't have a problem with uh no no uh, uh water um so what, what i've been doing lately is identifying sites that have good water and i can get a ship into the location and my my ship uh, captain has uh, helped me identify we've got three identified now that are viable and the um, state's been very helpful with it uh, i want to eventually get to 20 uh, so that if we have a problem with one we can go to the next one and pick up etc uh, but uh, that, that's what we're working on now well, the other that. thing i the yeah. other thing i end up doing all the time people come up here and wanted it to go see everything, and so I get them in a helicopter, and we take a take a, a ride uh, throughout the southeast Alaska of Alaska, and, and uh, uh, most of them are just shocked. I mean, the, the funny one was the guy who was on the the uh, uh, I forget the name of the organization, but it's with the uh, river mm -hmm. and so it down it goes down into California. And they're having serious problems. Um, and he came up and I took, took him around and he cried. Hmm. Wow. He said he had never, he had never seen so much beautiful water. Hmm. Um, and uh, so 
he's out of Las Vegas, so, so he's uh, going to be coming back here soon, looking for a way to connect. Yeah, uh, uh, on the uh, on the uh, Pacific. Yeah, tell us about Aqueous International Inc. and its thirty-year journey toward this solution. Uh, well, that uh, after everything else we I went through. Uh, working and helping the, the governor, um, I created a company with with me and uh, four other guys, all of them, all of whom don't live in Alaska, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we just began to continue to scrape out and find the pieces that made sense and we could make it work. Mm -hmm. um, we even have an interest in South Korea, where I spent two years in in the army. Uh, but it's on the side of China, and uh, we can bring water into South Korea, put it in bottles, or uh, and uh, send it uh, quickly to uh, to China. Um, if, if you look in the book, the pictures of quality of water in China is pretty bad, mm. and even Alaska, uh, the a group of, of uh, experts from Alaska and Low 48 went to China at their request to see if they could find a way to clean up the mess. Yeah. And uh, after all the work they did, they said, no, mm. uh, the worst thing you can do is try to clean it all up. Yeah. Uh, so, and I ha I've been over there, I have an, an, an attorney over there in China that works with me and uh, it's, it's, um, it's a different thing that they need, but it's a very difficult thing to get done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about desalinization? Well, what, what, what's happening with desal is these um, uh, large systems, particularly in the Middle East, um, are costing, uh, cost, uh, causing a lot of uh, problems because the water comes back and pretty soon the quality of the water is not as good as it was when they started. Mm -hmm. And so they end up having to find another source. Um, I, I ran uh, water bags all over the mid, the, uh, uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> all over in the middle, middle part of uh, the, the, the yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so there. What a lot of uh, companies are trying to find a way to clean the water when they pick it up. Most of them just deal with the salt. Yeah, uh, but um, that's uh, becoming a bigger problem. Yeah, and and uh, if I I'm looking actually for a site in Canada. Uh, which they're interested in working with me on a very large lake, but it has access to a ship. Mm. Uh, so if I can make that work for the for the Atlantic, uh, then we can provide uh, sources and, and stuff in the uh, Atlantic. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about pharmaceutical contaminants in today's water. Uh, well, water per se, uh, except for um, glacial water, um, is not clean, mm -hmm. uh, both with unbelievably uh, a growing amount of plastics that are very, very small, but they're in the, actually ending up in medications and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they have to change that out and find a new source, uh, et cetera. Uh, I've walked on the the uh, parts of south Alaska, southeast Alaska, and uh, the things that you see on the beach there are just amazing. Uh, we get a lot of stuff from China. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually talking now about... Uh, setting up a system that cleans up these beaches uh, on a regular basis uh, so that we can get all that out of there. But if you go out 10, 20 feet in the water, it's all over there too. And uh, the easy thing is is plastic because it floats. 
Uh, and so you can see it. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Plastics, you would say, are the biggest threats? Uh, yeah, for us, for Alaska, plastics are, and luckily they don't affect glaciers. So the glaciers uh, uh, grow and then get small and then they get, grow again. One of the fascinating things in southeast Alaska is the, the large um, mountains keep getting bigger and pushing the uh, or the water up with the uh, systems. And the good thing about it is I don't have to worry about that. It's a, it's a bigger, it means we get more water. Yeah. And uh, it holds more water up there, particularly some of these uh, systems that are over 32,000 years old. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you've done great work on this book, wonderful research. It is truly needed in this world where water in many areas is in short supply and foreseeably could be an even shorter supply down the road. So answers are needed. You have provided many. The name of the book is The New Water Future, Pacific Markets, California, Mexico, South America, and China. It is a bold and brilliant vision for a cleaner, more sustainable water future, delivering science, strategy, and hope to a world in need. Rick, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. I really appreciate uh, what you and all of your guys do and uh, look forward to continue to work with you. Looking forward to it. Absolutely more conversations in the future for sure. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.